Welcome to the magnificent Jack Singer Concert Hall here at the Arts Commons. I love being on this stage because for many years I was the chair of the board of the organizations that's now called the Arts Commons. In fact, I wrote my master's thesis on the future of this particular organization and in all those years they never let me get on the stage. So <laughs> in this job I do get to do it every now and then. The best part of course of being on this stage is that these stage lights are so bright that I have no idea if anyone's actually out there. I can hear you, but I cannot see you. So as long as you're not a laugh track, we're in good shape. So thank you all for coming together uh, today. As you've heard from my good friend Reg, uh, we are gathering here, of course, on very ancient lands. And I, it's important, I think, to think about that context for a moment. That, in fact, people have been coming to this place, to Mokinstus, for thousands of years, drawn here by the natural resource, drawn here to the elbow, the place where two rivers meet, precisely because of the land. Drawn here for thousands of years to hunt and fish and trade, to live, to love, to have great victories, to taste bitter disappointment, mostly to build community. And I think it's important for us to remember that long history that the original inhabitants of this land, the Nitsitapi, the people, we call them the Blackfoot people now, have always graciously shared this land with others. Whether the beaver people of the Sutina nation or the stony people of the Nakoda nations, the Métis people with whom we walk hand in hand, or for the last 150 years or so, people from every corner of this broken earth, coming here, coming here, to this place of safety, of sanctuary, of welcome, and above all, of opportunity. And when we think about the future, as we're thinking about where we are going, it's important for us to remember where we have come from and why we do what we do. Why we have to continue to fight every day that this remains a place of welcome, of safety, of sanctuary, and above all, of opportunity. And how do we do that? Well, I'm thrilled that we're gonna spend the day today really thinking about exactly that question. What do we create from what we have? How do we move forward together as a community? So let me first thank all of the speakers, panelists, volunteers, sponsors, our hosts, and all of you to engage in this important discussion. I love the terminology that we're using. The energy system the future requires of us. These are hard questions. When we talk about transition, when we talk about change, we recognize that change is very difficult. And change for change's sake is rarely helpful. So we really do have to think hard about what we do the conversations that we're having today will be significant and timely. The opportunities generated by the Energy Futures Lab helps us give serious thought, not just about transitioning the energy system, that's obviously the base of what we're talking about today, but actually it's about creating a more resilient community, a more economically resilient community, a more environmentally resilient community, a more socially resilient community. And how do we do that? How do we craft resilience? Let me talk about it economically for a moment. You all know that Calgary has had an incredibly successful economy for a very long time. You know that we have been the economic engine of this nation, some would argue of the continent, for many, many, many years. We have the highest concentration of corporate head offices in the country, made up largely of energy companies. But of course we also know that we have failed in building a truly resilient economy in this place. So we've gone from having the lowest unemployment rate of any major city in Canada for many, many, many years to the highest in 18 months. We've gone from a downtown where you couldn't rent an office for love or money for many, many, many years to a 30% commercial vacancy rate in our downtown core. I love roller coasters. This is a bit much. And it really does, in fact, speak about the importance of building in that kind of resiliency 
into everything we do. And it also is about talking about the resiliency that we're building. So I graduated from university, from the University of Calgary with a business degree in 1993. I know you're all trying to do the math. I was a child prodigy. <laughs> I was nine. When I graduated uh, with my BCom in 1993, about 50% of Calgary's GDP was, was oil and gas. Between 1993 and 2015, we had more than a trillion dollars with a T of investment in the Alberta energy sector flow into the economy. And the oil and gas sector went from 50% of Calgary's GDP to 30%. So in fact, we've been diversifying. We've been creating resiliency all over the place without anybody noticing. And part of this is telling the stories of the incredible work that has gone on here, both entrepreneurially and intrapreneurially. I would argue that the energy companies based here in Calgary or who have significant work in Calgary are among the most innovative companies in the world. And I will leave it to others to give you more technical uh, information about what we've done in terms of usage of water, uh, carbon emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emissions generally, and impacts on land within the traditional oil and gas sector. And the fact that, in fact, many of the innovations in the oil and gas sector that are leading to today's lower commodity prices were innovations that were invented right here. You're welcome. But these are the sorts of things that we need to keep talking about. We also need to talk about our incredible movement here in this city on clean tech and on renewables. I talk about these stories all the time when I'm traveling abroad. In fact, clean tech is one of the six core areas of strength and growth that we've identified for the economy of this region now and going forward. But I do have some stats, and I thought it'd be interesting to give you these to set context for some of the rest of the day. In 2015, Calgary's green economy generated 3.63 billion, I love how accurate that number is, who counted? 3.63 billion in gross output, 1.78 billion in gross domestic product, and Calgary's green economy, green energy economy, employs about 15,000 people. As you know, for many years, the city of Calgary's operations are 100% powered by renewable energy. Not just the, the LRT, but in fact, all of our operations, which really helped as a major buyer of electricity to create opportunity and space for renewal, renewable capacity within our grid. Now, one thing you may or may not know about me, I suspect you all know about it, maybe, is that I'm absolutely obsessed with electricity. It comes from starting a new job and suddenly realizing you're the sole shareholder of a very large electrical utility. But I knew a little bit about it before. In fact, uh, last summer, two summers ago, I had the opportunity to go with my family back to Tanzania and Uganda, where my family comes from. We hadn't been in about 40 years. And so I went with my mom, who's 75, and my sister and her husband and my nieces, who at the time were 6 and 11. And they were really excited about going to Africa, going on safari, seeing elephants and giraffes. And I was like, well, you know, we do have some um, hydroelectric plants we need to take a look at and uh, a few different uh, off-grid, village-based solar generation projects, just, just for interest's sake. Um, and they were teasing me, well, my sister and her husband were teasing me anyway, saying I sounded like a 1970s development economist because I'm obsessed with rural electrification. But I am obsessed with it. So I'll give you an example. I went to visit a dam in Uganda, the Bujangali Dam, a gigantic hydroelectric power generation project. That dam generates 400 megawatts. And 400 megawatts is approximately half of the electricity needs of the nation of Uganda, a nation of 40 million people. Now, those of you who know electricity know why that's such a shocking thing, what I just said. Because, of course, we also built a beautiful plant here in East Calgary, the Shepherd Energy Center, which I'm extremely proud of. It's the baseline for this generation and the next generation of combined cycle natural gas turbine plants. It basically sets the environmental baseline for natural gas power generation in the province. I'm extremely proud of it. And the Shepherd Energy Center is 800 megawatts. 800 megawatts is half of the electricity needs of the city of Calgary, 1.2 million people. So we take 1.6 gigawatts, the entire nation of Uganda uses 800 megawatts, 40 million people. So getting this right, 
understanding how to get safe, clean, green power into people's hands is not such something for the economy of Calgary. It's something for the world. And that innovation has to happen now. And if you really, really caught me in the hallway, I'd go on and on about electricity storage. I'm the only guy ever to visit the Tesla factory and say, I'm not really interested in looking at the cars. I want to look at the batteries. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not the only one who's ever done that. Many, many people have done that. But this is important stuff. And I'm very proud of NMAX, um, who have been a leader in this space for a very, very long time. NMAX has invested $425 million in renewable energy projects. NMAX is the province's largest solar market participant, 50% of all rooftop solar capacity. And of course, NMAX many, many, many years ago used our LRT system, which is the most successful light rail transit system in North America, to power it by wind. And we have many, many other smaller and bigger examples. Now, I think of uh, my friend Dan Balban in Greengate, 450 megawatts of wind power projects. That's enough power to power uh, enough energy to power 200,000 homes. In fact, according to my colleagues at Calgary Economic Development, and I know Megan is here and you'll hear from her later, Calgary has more than 500 companies active in the green economy. I've also been working hard, I don't know if I'm going to succeed, but I've been working hard to convince the federal government that the newly forming Canada Infrastructure Bank should be located here in Calgary to create a source of capital for the kinds of innovation in energy infrastructure that we're talking about that you'll be hearing about today. So, as many of you know, I was a business professor just before I was mayor, and before that I was a management consultant for many years, so nothing gets me more excited than the idea of a full afternoon of business case discussions, which is what we're about to do. Unfortunately, being the mayor does call, so I won't be able to stay with you the whole afternoon. But that said, since I've got you all in the room, since I've got this big group of community and business leaders here, and I'm a politician who has a microphone, there is one other thing I do want to talk to you about. And it really ties into the kind of future that we're building here together. So you all know, I hope, that this is a very important year for Canada, right? Do you know why? I know you're there. <laughs> I can kind of see you. Yes, that's right. It's the 150th anniversary of Confederation. It is Canada's sesquicentennial. And I want to share with you my two sesquicentennial dreams. So my first sesquicentennial dream, actually I have three of them. My first is four games in a row. <laughs> Andrew Ferentz is here and I want to say something about last night, but it's just, it's not polite, right? <laughs> Plus glass houses. Anyway, my second sesquicentennial dream is that I want to be able to use the word sesquicentennial as much as possible this year because it is super fun to say. So, because you're sitting in a dark room, we'll get a little energy in the room. On the count of three, I want you to say this great word with me, sesquicentennial. So on three, one, two, three, sesquicentennial. Didn't that just make your whole afternoon? <laughs> hey, pour ceux qui parlent français, comme toujours, c'est plus fun en français. Le mot en français, c'est sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. Doesn't that sound both delicious and dangerous all at the same time? My real sesquicentennial dream is the reason I wear this number three on my lapel every day. No, it does not stand for third term for Mayor Nenshi. <laughs> October 16th, just saying. Um, don't clap now, clap on October 16th. What it really stands for is my actual sesquicentennial project. I have been reaching out to Canadians from coast to coast to coast, asking every single Canadian to consider making an anniversary gift to the nation. And that gift to the nation is three acts of community service. We're calling it Three Things for Canada or Trois Gestes pour le Canada. And that's all it is really, that every single one of us do three things for the community. Could be something small, mow your neighbor's lawn. Could be something big, help your community think big about the future of energy. Doesn't matter. But imagine if my crazy dream actually works. That's 100 million acts of community service this year from Canadians, big and small. Acts for your neighborhood, for your city, for your province, for your country, for your world. And in this broken and scary world of ours, 
in this world where it feels like the forces that would divide us are prevailing over those that would bring us together. Imagine what a symbol that would be from Canada. That to celebrate our 150th birthday, to celebrate our sesquicentennial, we did service. And we showed the world that the future of humanity is about community. And the future of community is about service. Pretty good dream, eh? So I hope that all of you today, thank you. So I hope that all of you today, as you get inspired by these great ideas and these great innovations that you're gonna learn about today, also think about your own role. And what our job is as everyday people using our everyday hands and our everyday voices to make extraordinary change. And I hope every one of you is inspired not just to think about your three things, but to think about how we create that future that community of safety, of sanctuary, of welcome, of opportunity for everyone and how we do it together and how we do it while creating resiliency. It's an easy job, right? But luckily, we're all up for it and that's what today is all about. Thank you all. <laughs>